This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Tom Yates. Tom in BKK.com. Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Book 34. Sands at 70. Manahatta. My city's fit and noble name resumed, Choice aboriginal name, with marvelous beauty, Meaning, a rocky founded island, Shores where ever gaily dash the coming, Going, hurrying sea waves. Palmanok Sea beauty, stretched and basking, one side thy inland ocean laving, Broad with copious commerce, steamers, sails, And one the Atlantic's wind caressing, Fierce or gentle, mighty holes Dark gliding in the distance. Isle of sweet brooks of drinking water, Healthy air and soil, Isle of the salty shore and breeze and brine. From Matuok Point I stand as on some mighty eagle's beak, Eastward the sea absorbing, Viewing nothing but sea and sky, The tossing waves, the foam, The ships in the distance, The wild unrest, The snowy curling caps, That inbound urge and urge of waves, Seeking the shores forever. To those who have failed, to those who have failed in aspiration vast, To unnamed soldiers fallen in front on the lead, To calm, devoted engineers, To over-ardent travelers, To pilots on their ships, To many a lofty song and picture without recognition, I'd rear laurel-covered monument, High, high above the rest, To all cut off before their time, Possessed by some strange spirit of fire, Quenched by an early death. A Carol Closing Sixty-Nine A Carol Closing Sixty-Nine A resume, a repetition, My lines in joy and hope continuing on the same, Of ye, O God, life, nature, freedom, poetry, Of you, my land, your rivers, prairies, states, you, mottled flag I love, your aggregate retained entire, of north, south, east, and west, your items all, of me, myself, the joking heart yet beating in my breast, the body wrecked, old, poor, and paralyzed, the strange inertia falling pall-like round me, the burning fires down in my sluggish blood not yet extinct, the undiminished faith, the groups of loving friends. The bravest soldiers. Brave, brave were the soldiers, high name today, who lived through the fight. But the bravest pressed to the front and fell, unnamed, unknown. A font of type. This latent mine, these unlaunched voices, passionate powers, wrath, argument, or praise, or comic leer, or prayer devout, non peril, brevier, bourgeois, long primer merely, these ocean waves arousable to fury and to death, or soothed to ease and sheeny sun and sleep, within the pallid slivers slumbering. As I sit writing here, as I sit writing here, sick and grown old, not my least burden is that dullness of the years, querilities, ungracious glooms, aches, lethargy, constipation, whimpering ennui, may filter in my dally songs. My canary bird, did we count great, O soul, to penetrate the themes of mighty books? Absorbing deep and full from thoughts, plays, speculations? But now from thee to me, caged bird, To feel thy joyous warble, Filling the air, the lonesome room, 
the long forenoon, is it not just as great, O oh soul? Queries to my seventieth year. Approaching, nearing, curious, thou dim, uncertain specter, bringest thou life or death? Strength, weakness, blindness, more paralysis and heavier? Or placid skies and sun, wilt stir the waters yet? Or haply cut me short for good? Or leave me here as now, dull, parrot-like and old, with cracked voice harping, screeching. The wall about martyrs, greater than memory of Achilles or Ulysses, more, more by far to thee than tomb of Alexander, those cartloads of old charnel ashes, scales and splints of moldy bones, once living men, once resolute courage, aspiration, strength, the stepping stones to thee today and here, America. The first dandelion. Simple and fresh and fair, from winter's clothes emerging, as if no artifice of fashion, business, politics had ever been, forth from its sunny nook of sheltered grass, innocent, golden, calm as the dawn, the spring's first dandelion shows its trustful face. America, center of equal daughters, equal sons, all, all alike endeared, grown, ungrown, young or old, strong, ample, fair, enduring, capable, rich, perennial with the earth, with freedom, law, and love, a grand, sane, towering, seated mother, chaired in the adamant of time. Memories. How sweet the silent backward tracings, the wanderings as in dreams, the meditation of old times resumed, their loves, joys, persons, voyages. Today and thee, the appointed winners in a long stretched game, the course of time and nations, Egypt, India, Greece, and Rome. The past entire, with all its heroes, histories, arts, experiments, its store of songs, inventions, voyages, teachers, books, garnered for now and thee, to think of it, the heirdom all converged in thee. After the dazzle of day. After the dazzle of day is gone, only the dark, dark night shows to my eyes the stars. After the clangor of organ majestic, or chorus, or perfect band, silent athwart my soul moves the symphony true. Abraham Lincoln, born February 12, 1809. Today, from each and all, a breath of prayer, a pulse of thought, to memory of him, to birth of him. Out of May's shows selected. Apple orchards, the trees all covered with blossoms. Wheat fields carpeted far and near in vital emerald green. The eternal exhaustless freshness of each early morning. The yellow golden transparent haze of the warm afternoon sun the aspiring lilac bushes with profuse purple or white flowers. Halcyon Days Not from successful love alone, nor wealth, nor honored middle age, nor victories of politics or war, but as life wanes and all the turbulent passions calm, as gorgeous, vapory, silent hues cover the evening sky, as softness, fullness, rest, suffuse the frame like fresher, balmier air, as the days take on a mellower light, and the apple at last hangs, really finished, and indolent ripe on the tree, then for the teeming, quietest, happiest days of all, the brooding and blissful halcyon days. Fancies at Knave Sink 1. The Pilot in the Mist Steaming the northern rapids, an old St. Lawrence reminisce, 
A sudden memory flash comes back, I know not why. Here, waiting for the sunrise, gazing from the hill. Again, tis just at morning, a heavy haze contends with daybreak. Again, the trembling, laboring vessel veers me. I press through foam-dashed rocks that almost touch me. Again I mark where aft the small, thin Indian helmsman looms in the mist with brow elate and governing hand. 2. Had I the choice Had I the choice to tally greatest bards, to limb their portraits, stately, beautiful, and emulate at will, Homer with all his wars and warriors, Hector, Achilles, Ajax, or Shakespeare's woe-entangled Hamlet, Lear, Othello, Tennyson's fair ladies, meter or wit the best, or choice conceit to wield in perfect rhyme, delight of singers, these, these, O oh sea, all these I'd gladly barter, would you the undulation of one wave, its trick to me transfer, or breathe one breath of yours upon my verse, and leave its odor there. 3. You Tides with Ceaseless Swell You tides with ceaseless swell, you power that does this work, you unseen force, centripetal, centrifugal, through spaces spread, rapport of sun, moon, earth, and all the constellations. What are the messages by you from distant stars to us? What Sirius? What Capellas? What central heart? And you the pulse vivifies all. What boundless aggregate of all? What subtle indirection and significance in you? What clue to all in you? What fluid, vast identity holding the universe with all its parts as one as sailing in a ship? Four, last of ebb and daylight waning. Last of ebb and daylight waning. Scented sea cool landward marking. Smells of sedge and salt in coming. With many a half-caught voice sent up from the eddies, Many a muffled confession, Many a sob and whispered word, As of speakers far or hid. How they sweep down and out, How they mutter, Poets unnamed, Artists greatest of any, With cherished lost designs, Love's unresponse, A chorus of ages' complaints, Hope's last words, some suicide's despairing cry, away to the boundless waste and never again return. On to oblivion then, on, on, and do your part, ye burying, ebbing tide. On for your time, ye furious debauch. Five, and yet not you alone. And yet not you alone, twilight and burying ebb, nor you, ye lost designs alone, nor failures, aspirations. I know, divine deceitful ones, your glamours seeming, duly by you, from you, the tide and light again, duly the hinges turning, duly the needed discord parts offsetting, blending, weaving from you, from sleep, night, death itself. The Rhythms of Birth Eternal 6. Proudly the Flood Comes In Proudly the Flood Comes In, Shouting, Foaming, Advancing, Long it holds at the high, With bosom broad outswelling, All throbs, dilates, The farms, woods, Streets of cities, Workmen at work, Mansails, topsails, Jibs, Appear in the offing, Steamers, pennants of smoke, And under the forenoon sun, Freighted with human lives, Gaily the outward bound, Gaily the inward bound, Flaunting from many a spar the flag I love. 7. By that long scan of waves. By that long scan of waves, myself called back, resumed upon myself. In every crest, some undulating light or shade, some retrospect, joys, travels, studies, silent panoramas, scenes ephemeral, 
the long past war, the battles, hospital sites, the wounded and the dead, myself through every bygone phase, my idle youth, old age at hand, my threescore years of life summed up, and more, and past, by any grand ideal tried, intentionless, the whole a nothing. And haply yet some drop within God's schemes ensemble, some wave, or part of a wave, like one of yours, ye multitudinous ocean. 8. Then last of all. Then last of all, caught from these shores, this hill, of you, O tides, the mystic human meaning, only by law of you, your swell and ebb, enclosing me the same, the brain that shapes, the voice that chants, this song. Election Day, November 1884 If I should need to name, O Western world, your powerfulest scene and show, Twould not be you, Niagara, nor you, ye limitless prairies, nor your huge rifts of canyons, Colorado, nor you, Yosemite, nor Yellowstone, with all its spasmic geyser loops ascending to the skies, appearing and disappearing, nor Oregon's white cones, nor Huron's belt of mighty lakes, nor Mississippi's stream. These seething hemispheres humanity as now I'd name, the still small voice vibrating, America's choosing day. The heart of it not in the chosen, the act itself the main, the quadrennial choosing. The stretch of north and south aroused, seaboard and inland, Texas to Maine, the prairie states, Vermont, Virginia, California. The final ballot shower from east to west, the paradox and conflict, the countless snowflakes falling, a swordless conflict, yet more than all Rome's wars of old, or modern Napoleon's, the peaceful choice of all, or good or ill humanity, welcoming the darker odds, the dross, foams and ferments the wine, it serves to purify, while the heart pants, life glows, these stormy gusts and winds waft precious ships, Swelled Washington's, Jefferson's, Lincoln's sails. With husky, haughty lips, O oh sea. With husky, haughty lips, O oh sea, Where day and night I wend thy surf beat shore, Imaging to my sense thy varied, strange suggestions. I see and plainly list thy talk and conference here. The troops of white-maned racers racing to the goal, Thy ample, smiling face dashed with the sparkling dimples of the sun, Thy brooding scowl and murk, thy unloosed hurricanes, Thy unsubduedness, caprices, wilfulness. Great as thou art above the rest, thy many tears, A lack from all eternity in thy content, Not but the greatest struggles, wrongs, defeats, Could make thee greatest, no less could make thee. Thy lonely state, something thou ever seekest and seekest, yet never gainest. Surely some right withheld, some voice in huge monotonous rage of freedom lover pent. Some vast heart like a planet's chained and chaffing in those breakers. By a lingering swell and spasm and panting breath and rhythmic rasping of thy sands and waves and serpent hiss and savage peals of laughter and undertones of distant lion roar sounding appealing to the sky's deaf ear but now rapport for once a phantom in the night thy confident for once the first and last confession of the globe Outsurging, muttering from thy soul's abysms, The tale of cosmic elemental passion Thou tellest to a kindred soul. Death of General Grant As one by one withdraw the lofty actors From that great play on history's stage ye turn, That lurid partial act of war and peace, Of old and new contending, Fought out through wrath, fears, dark dismays, and many a long suspense. All past, and since in countless graves receding, mellowing, victors and vanquished, Lincolns and Lees, now thou with them, man of the mighty days, 
and equal to the days. Thou from the prairies, tangled and many veined and hard, has been thy part. To admiration has it been enacted. Red Jacket from Aloft Upon this scene, this show, yielded today by fashion, learning, wealth, nor in caprice alone, some grains of deepest meaning. Haply, aloft, who knows, from distant sky clouds blended shapes, as some old tree or rock or cliff thrilled with its soul, product of nature's sun, stars, earth direct, a towering human form, in hunting shirt of film, armed with the rifle, a half-ironical smile curving its phantom lips, like one of Ossian's ghosts, looks down. Washington's Monument, February 1885 Ah, not this marble, dead and cold, far from its base and shaft expanding, the round zone circling, comprehending, thou, Washington, art all the world's continents entire, not yours alone, America, Europe's as well, in every part, castle of lord or laborer's cot, or frozen north, or sultry south, the Africans, the Arabs in his tent, old Asia's there with venerable smile, seated amid her ruins, greets the antique the hero knew, tis but the same, the air legitimate, continued ever, the indomitable heart and arm proofs of the never broken line, courage, alertness, patience, faith, the same, even in defeat, defeated not, the same. Wherever sails a ship, or house is built on land, or day or night, through teeming cities, streets, indoors or out, factories or farms, now or to come or past, where patriot wills existed or exist, wherever freedom poised by toleration, swayed by law, stands or is rising thy true monument. Of that blithe throat of thine, of that blithe throat of thine, from arctic bleak and blank, I'll mind the lesson, solitary bird, let me too welcome chilling drifts, even the profoundest chill, as now, a torpid pulse, a brain unnerved, old age landlocked within its winter bay, cold, cold, oh, cold. These snowy hairs, my feeble arm, my frozen feet, for them thy faith, thy rule I take, and grave it to the last. Not summer's zones alone, not chance of youth, or self's warm tides alone, but held by sluggish flows, packed in the northern ice, the cumulus of years, these with gay heart I also sing. Broadway What hurrying human tides, or day or night, what passions, winnings, losses, ardors swim thy waters? What worlds of evil, bliss, and sorrow stem thee? What curious questioning glances, glints of love, leer, envy, scorn, contempt, hope, aspiration, Thou portal, thou arena, thou of the myriad long-drawn lines and groups, Could but thy flagstones, curbs, facades, tell their inimitable tales. Thy windows rich and huge hotels, thy sidewalks wide, Thou of the endless sliding, mincing, shuffling feet, Thou, like the party-colored world itself, Like infinite, teeming, mocking life, Thou visored, vast, unspeakable show and lesson. To get the final lilt of songs. To get the final lilt of songs, to penetrate the inmost lore of poets, to know the mighty ones, Job, Homer, Aeschylus, Dante, Shakespeare, Tennyson, Emerson, to diagnose the shifting delicate tints of love and pride and doubt, to truly understand, to encompass these, the last keen faculty and entrance price, old age, and what it brings from all its past experiences. Old Salt Kosabon Far back, related on my mother's side, 
Old Salt Kosabun, I'll tell you how he died, had been a sailor all his life, was nearly ninety, lived with his married grandchild, Jenny, house on a hill, with view of bay at hand, and distant cape, and stretched to open sea. The last of afternoons, the evening hours, for many a year his regular custom, in his great armchair by the window seated, sometimes indeed through half the day, watching the coming, going of the vessels, he mutters to himself, and now the close of all. One struggling outbound brig one day, baffled for long, cross tides and much wrong going, at last at nightfall strikes the breeze aright, her whole luck veering, and swiftly bending round the cape, the darkness proudly entering, cleaving, as he watches. She's free. She's on her destination. These the last words. When Jenny came, he sat there dead. Dutch Kosabon, Old Salt, related on my mother's side, far back. The Dead Tenor as down the stage again, with Spanish hat and plumes and gait and inimitable, back from the fading lessons of the past, I'd call, I'd tell, and own, how much from thee, the revelation of the singing voice from thee, so firm, so liquid soft, again that tremulous manly timber, the perfect singing voice, deepest of all to me the lesson, trial and test of all. How through these strains distilled, how the rapt ears, the soul of me absorbing, Fernando's heart, Manrico's passion call, Erani's sweet Gennaro's. I fold thenceforth, or seek to fold, within my chance transmuting, freedoms and loves and faiths unloose cantable, as perfumes, colors, sunlight's correlation. From these, for these, with these, a hurried line, dead tenor, a wafted autumn leaf, dropped in the closing grave, the shoveled earth, to memory of thee. Continuities Nothing is ever really lost, or can be lost. No birth, identity, form, no object of the world. Nor life, nor force, nor any visible thing. Appearance must not foil nor shifted sphere confuse thy brain. Ample are time and space, ample the fields of nature, the body sluggish, aged, cold, the embers left from earlier fires, the light in the eye grown dim shall duly flame again. The sun now low in the west rises for mornings and for noons continual, to frozen clods over the spring's invisible law returns, with grass and flowers and summer fruits and corn. Yanandio A song, a poem of itself, the word itself a dirge, amid the wilds, the rocks, the storm and wintry night, to me such misty, strange tableau the syllables calling up. Yanandio, I see, far in the west or north, a limitless ravine with plains and mountains dark. I see swarms of stalwart chieftains, medicine men and warriors, as flitting by like clouds of ghosts they pass and are gone in the twilight. Race of the woods, the landscapes free, and the falls. No picture, poem, statement passing them to the future. Yanandio! Yanandio! Unlime they disappear. Today gives place and fades. The cities, farms, factories fade. A muffled sonorous sound. A wailing word is borne through the air for a moment. Then blank and gone and still and utterly lost. Life Ever the undiscouraged, resolute, struggling soul of man have former armies failed, then we send fresh armies, and fresh again. Ever the grappled mystery of all earth's ages, old or new, ever the eager eyes, hurrahs, the welcome clapping hands, the loud applause, ever the soul dissatisfied, curious, unconvinced at last, 
struggling today the same, battling the same. Going somewhere. My science friend, my noblest woman friend, now buried in an English grave, and this a memory leaf for her dear sake, ended our talk. The sum, concluding all we know of old or modern learning, intuitions deep, of all geologies, histories, of all astronomy, of evolution, metaphysics all, is that we all are onward, onward, speeding slowly, surely bettering, life, life an endless march, an endless army, no halt, but it is duly over. The world, the race, the soul, in space and time the universes, all bound as is befitting each, all surely going somewhere. Small the theme of my chant. Small the theme of my chant, yet the greatest, namely, oneself, a simple, separate person. That, for the use of the new world, I sing. Man's physiology complete, from top to toe, I sing. Not physiognomy alone, nor brain alone, is worthy for the muse. I say the form complete is worthier far. The female equally with the male, I sing. Nor cease at the theme of oneself. I speak the word of the modern, the word in mass. My days I sing, and the lands, with interstice I knew of hapless war. O oh, friend, whoever you are, at last arriving hither to commence, I feel through every leaf the pressure of your hand, which I return, and thus upon our journey, footing the road, and more than once, and linked together, let us go. True Conquerors Old farmers, travelers, workmen, no matter how crippled or bent, Old sailors, out of many a perilous voyage, storm and wreck. Old soldiers from campaigns, with all their wounds, defeats, and scars. Enough that they've survived it all, long life's unflinching ones, forth from their struggles, trials, fights, to have emerged at all. In that alone, true conquerors o'er all the rest. The United States to Old World Critics Hear first the duties of today, the lessons of the concrete, wealth, order, travel, shelter, products, plenty, as of the building of some varied, vast, perpetual edifice, whence to arise inevitable in time, the towering roofs, the lamps, the solid planted spires, tall, shooting to the stars. The calming thought of all, that coursing on, whatever man's speculations, amid the changing schools, theologies, philosophies, amid the bawling presentations, new and old, the round earth's silent vital laws, facts, modes, continue. Thanks in old age. Thanks in old age. Thanks, ere I go. For health, the midday sun, the impalpable air, for life, mere life, for precious ever lingering memories of you, my mother dear, you, father, you, brothers, sisters, friends, for all my days, not those of peace alone, the days of war the same, for gentle words, caresses, gifts from foreign lands, for shelter, wine, and meat, for sweet appreciation. You, distant, dim, unknown, or young, or old, countless, unspecified readers, beloved. We never met, and never shall meet, and yet our souls embrace, long, close, and long. For beings, groups, love, deeds, words, books, for colors, forms, for all the brave, strong men, devoted, hardy men, who have forward sprung in freedom's help all years, all lands, for braver, stronger, more devoted men, a special laurel ere I go to life's war's chosen ones, the cannoneers of song and thought, the great artillerists, the foremost leaders, captains of the soul. As soldier from an ended war returned, as traveler out of myriads, 
to the long procession retrospective. Thanks, joyful thanks, a soldier's, traveler's thanks. Life and Death The two old, simple problems ever intertwined, close home, elusive, present, baffled, grappled. By each successive age insoluble, passed on, to ours today, and we pass on the same. The Voice of the Rain And who art thou, said I, to the soft falling shower, which, strange to tell, gave me an answer, as here translated. I am the poem of earth, said the voice of the rain. Eternal I rise, impalpable, out of the land and the bottomless sea, upward to heaven, whence, vaguely formed, altogether changed, and yet the same. I descend to lave the droughts, atomies, dust layers of the globe, and all that in them without me were seeds only, latent, unborn, and forever, by day and night, I give back life to my own origin, and make pure and beautify it. For song, issuing from its birthplace, after fulfillment, wandering, wrecked or unwrecked, duly with love returns. Soon shall the winter's foil be here. Soon shall the winter's foil be here. Soon shall these icy ligatures unbind and melt. A little while, and air, soil, wave, suffused, shall be in softness, bloom, and growth. A thousand forms shall rise from these dead clods and chills as from low burial graves. Thine eyes, ears, all thy best attributes, all that takes cognizance of natural beauty, shall wake and fill. Thou shalt perceive the simple shows, the delicate miracles of earth, dandelions, clover, the emerald grass, the early scents and flowers, the arbutus underfoot, the willow's yellow-green, the blossoming plum and cherry. With these the robin, lark, and thrush, singing their songs, the flitting bluebird, for such the scenes the annual play brings on. While not the past forgetting, while not the past forgetting, today at least, contention sunk entire, peace, brotherhood uprisen, for sign reciprocal our northern, southern hands lay on the graves of all dead soldiers, north or south, nor for the past alone, for meanings to the future. Reeves of Roses and Branches of Palm The Dying Veteran Amid these days of order, ease, prosperity, Amid the current songs of beauty, peace, decorum, I cast a reminisce. Likely twill offend you, I heard it in my boyhood, More than a generation since, A queer old savage man, A fighter under Washington himself, Large, brave, cleanly, hot-blooded, no talker, rather spiritualistic, had fought in the ranks, fought well, had been all through the Revolutionary War. Lay dying, sons, daughters, church deacons, lovingly tending him, sharping their sense, their ears, towards his murmuring half-caught words. Let me return again to my war days, to the sights and scenes, to forming the line of battle, to the scouts ahead reconnoitering, to the cannons, the grim artillery, to the galloping aides carrying orders, to the wounded, the fallen, the heat, the suspense, the perfume strong, the smoke, the deafening noise. Away with your life of peace, your joys of peace. Give me my old wild battle life again. Stronger Lessons have you learned lessons only of those who admired you and were tender with you and stood aside for you? Have you not learned great lessons from those who reject you and brace themselves against you or who treat you with contempt or dispute the passage with you? A Prairie Sunset 
shot gold, maroon and violet, dazzling silver, emerald, fawn, the earth's whole amplitude and nature's multiform power consigned for once to colors. The light, the general air possessed by them, colors till now unknown. No limit, confine, not the western sky alone, the high meridian, north, south, all. Pure, luminous color, fighting the silent shadows to the last. Twenty years. Down on the ancient wharf, the sand, I sit with a new corner chatting. He shipped as Greenhand Boy and sailed away, took some sudden vehement notion, since twenty years and more have circled round and round, while he, the globe, was circling round and round, and now returns. How changed the place, all the old landmarks gone, the parents dead. Yes, he comes back to lay in port for good, to settle, has a well-filled purse, no spot will do but this. The little boat that sculled him from the sloop, now held in leash, I see, I hear the slapping waves, the restless keel, the rocking in the sand. I see the sailor kit, the canvas bag, the great box bound with brass. I scan the face, all berry brown and bearded, the stout, strong frame, dressed in its russet suit of good scotch cloth. Then what the told-out story of those twenty years? What of the future? Orange Buds by Mail from Florida a lesser proof than old Voltaire's, yet greater, proof of this present time, and thee, thy broad expanse, America. To my plain northern hut, in outside clouds and snow, brought safely for a thousand miles over land and tide, some three days since on their own soil live sprouting, now hear their sweetness through my room unfolding, a bunch of orange buds by mail from Florida. Twilight, the soft voluptuous opiate shades, the sun just gone, the eager light dispelled, I too will soon be gone, dispelled, a haze, nirvana, rest and night, oblivion. You lingering sparse leaves of me. You lingering sparse leaves of me on winter nearing boughs, And I some well-shorn tree of field or orchard row, You tokens diminute and lorn, Not now the flush of May or July clover bloom, No grain of August now, You pallid banner staves, You penance valueless, You overstate of time, Yet my soul dearest leaves confirming all the rest, the faithfulest, hardiest, last. Not meager, latent boughs alone. Not meager, latent boughs alone, O oh, songs, scaly and bare like eagle's talons, But haply for some sunny day, who knows, Some future spring, some summer, bursting forth To verdant leaves or sheltering shade, to nourishing fruit, apples and grapes, the stalwart limbs of trees emerging, the fresh, free, open air, and love and faith like scented roses blooming. The Dead Emperor Today, with bending head and eyes, thou too, Columbia, less for the mighty crown laid low in sorrow, less for the emperor, Thy true condolence breathest, send us out over many a salt sea mile, mourning a good old man, a faithful shepherd, patriot. As the Greeks Signal Flame As the Greeks Signal Flame, by antique records told, rose from the hilltop like applause and glory, welcoming in fame some special veteran, hero, with rosy tinge reddening the land he'd served. So I, aloft from Manhattan's ship-fringed shore, lift a high, kindled brand for thee, old poet.
the dismantled ship. In some unused lagoon, some nameless bay, on sluggish, lonesome waters, anchored near the shore, an old, dismantled, gray and battered ship, disabled, done, after free voyages to all the seas of earth, hauled up at last, and housered tight, lies rusting, moldering. Now, precedent songs, farewell. Now, precedent songs, farewell, by every name, farewell. Trains of a staggering line in many a strange procession, wagons from ups and downs with intervals from elder years, mid-age, or youth. In cabin ships, or the old cause, or poets to come, or Palmanok, song of myself, Calamus, or Adam, or beat, beat, drums, or to the leaven soil they trod, or captain, my captain, cosmos, quicksand years, or thoughts, thou mother with thy equal brood, and many, many more unspecified, from fiber, heart of mine, from throat and tongue, my life's hot, pulsing blood, the personal urge and form for me, not merely paper, automatic type and ink, each song of mine, each utterance in the past, having its long, long history of life or death, or a soldier's wound, of country's loss or safety. Oh, heaven, what flash and startled endless train of all, compared indeed to that. What wretched shred, even at the best of all. An Evening Lull after a week of physical anguish, unrest and pain, and feverish heat, toward the ending day a calm and lull comes on, three hours of peace and soothing rest of brain. Old Age's Lambent Peaks The touch of flame, the illuminating fire, the loftiest look at all, over city, passion, sea, or prairie, mountain, wood, the earth itself, the airy, different, changing hues of all, in failing twilight, objects and groups, bearings, faces, reminiscences, the calmer sight, the golden setting, clear and broad, so much in the atmosphere, the points of view, the situations whence we scan, brought out by them alone, so much perhaps the best, unwrecked before, the lights indeed from them, old age's lambent peaks. After the supper and talk, after the supper and talk, after the day is done, as a friend from friends his final withdrawal prolonging, goodbye and goodbye, with emotional lips repeating, so hard for his hand to release those hands, no more will they meet, no more for communion of sorrow and joy, of old and young, a far-stretching journey awaits him, to return no more. Shunning, postponing severance, seeking to ward off the last word ever so little, even at the exit door turning, charges superfluous calling back, even as he descends the steps, something to eke out a minute additional, shadows of nightfall deepening, farewells, messages lessening, Dimmer the fourth goer's visage and form, soon to be lost for aye in the darkness. Lof, oh so lof to depart, gargulous to be the very last. End of Leaves of Grass, Chapter 34